Robert in Dallas, Texas. See more better with free prescription lenses? Call me Mo. I am Mo Better because that's what I'm going to have you seeing Mo Better. And I hear you desperately need to be seeing Mo Better when you're out there driving around. All crazy like the love of your life. Nelly has, you know what I'm talking about. How many loves of your life you got? One. You got one. And what did she do for you? Your one and only. She got you these Versace. The 1163M. M stands for medallion. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Color 1252, the pale gold and the 52 eye size. Let me take everything out of the oversized box that really needs to. It could be in a smaller box, by the way. Of course, you get the Versace card of authenticity. Where is it at? There we go. You can uh, register with this. You got your Versace cleaning cloth with the same medallion emblem that you got on the side of your glasses. And inside this Italian leather hard case is the star of the show, the main attraction. This is, of course it comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping. I'm going to put that on there when I ship to you. But this is the model number 1163M for medallion. There's also a bling, the 1163B, which has the Greco emblem all blinged out. This is M for medallion. And the color 1252 which is the pale gold and the 52 eye size so let me begin i'm gonna pop out the original demo lenses one of which says versace and of course you're going to receive all the manufacturer's original pa packaging and ooh, is this oh it's just a pat on there i thought they had something engraved on the inside i was gonna say that is way too cool if they did but i'm gonna go ahead and put the frame by the way you got the versace can you see this you got the versace nose pads on there even those say Versace, and of course, all Versace's made in Italy. And you got the serial number right there on the end of the right temple. So I'm going to put your frame into the tracing element of my blocker. And before I hit start, I'm going to program this shape into the computer 1447. So years from now, should you ever need new lenses, they're programmed into the, the computer. And I can mail you just the lenses right to your home. And I'm going to show you how you can change them out years from now. A little stylus is going to pop up and go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Versace frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. If you have unused vision insurance or unused health savings account flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase. And... In just a moment, this shape's going to pop up onto the computer. Come on, pop for me, pop for me. Oh, it's still doing a little thing. That's all right, it can do its thing. I'm going to do my thing. And Robert, when you get these, you're going to do your thing. So, I'm going to enter your pupillary distance, which is 64. That is 32 in each eye. The computer starts at 32.5, so I only have to tap the minus button one time. It goes down in half millimeter increments. I do want to raise the optical center up to 18, and let me mark that on there. Because you actually look through the top quadrant of the lens, you're not looking through the center. So I'm going to move that up, just like the crosshairs of a scope. I measure vertically and horizontally to put your exact prescription dead center in front of your eye. Now your prescription reads minus 50, minus 250 at 28. Minus 50, minus 250 at, turn the axis wheel to 20. I didn't have to go far. The last one I did was at 20. So now I'm at 28. Put the power drum on minus 50. Take the lens out of the protective sleeve. Put the lens in. Rotate it until the spherical component comes into view first. Find, check your astigmatism correction. Make sure all that is lined up. Put the clamp down. Lock it down. And I'm going to put three dots on your lenses. And where's my pen? Where'd my, where'd my pen go? Did I leave it down here? There we go. Mark this one, the right lens. Let me darken that so y'all can see what I'm doing here. This is the right lens. Let's do the same thing now for the left lens. Minus one, minus one and a quarter at one. Actually, is that 68, 108? Hang on, hang on. Let me go check my other paperwork. Hang on for one second. Don't go nowhere, y'all. That is 168. See how quick I came back? I couldn't even read my own handwriting. Sometimes I write too fast. Got to get the stuff out so you can see. So we're going to turn the axis wheel to 168. <coughs> Excuse me. Take the lens out of the protective sleeve. Put the power drum. Where was that? Minus 50. Put that on minus 1 now. 
rotate the lens to the spherical component comes into view check your stigmatism correction that's looking good and put the three dots on your lenses this is going to get them darker this time oh yeah that's what we're talking about label this one l for left and if you guys missed any of that let me recap <laughs> hey you moan but you'll be telling that joke tomorrow don't yeah i want credit i want a dollar every time you tell that joke so this is a block or as i like to call him jenny from the block jenny from the block just got a big old ring for a one million dollar rock from a rod but I need to attach this to your lens while it's cutting. So I need two double-sided adhesive stickers, of which I've got them right here. The black side is the sticky side. Put that one on the first block. Do the same thing now for the second one. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. On the back, that silver button is a magnet. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the arm. I'm going to press that there. And the reason why I put those three dots on there, it tells me that it's oriented and they're just perfectly with your astigmatism. And Robert, you got some crazy stigs. And I'll explain what that is a little bit later. Hit that button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the left lens. Pull the paper away. Make the black side sticky. Line up the magnet. Grab the left lens. Same pupillary distance. Same optical center height. Get everything lined up where it's supposed to be. You know, where it be at. That's where it is. And now that goes on there. Now we're going to come down here. This is the edger. This is what's going to do all the work while I run my mouth. It costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out, buy their own, put it on your kitchen counter. Then you can cut your own lenses at home. You won't need this guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes to do it for you. The cutting wheel is this diamond crusted wheel right here. It's going to act like heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens material. From this size down to this size. This wheel in the center with that channel, that little valley, that's what's going to put the V-shaped bevel on the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. So I'm going to go ahead and wake this up. Wakey, wakey. You are number 1447. 1447. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high-index plastic, or Trivex, I would select that, but we're going to stick with polycarbonate. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens because it's not going to be seen in a frame like this anyway. And I'm only going to put a safety bevel on the light safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. So, go ahead and press the sticker on there a little better. Place the magnet into the chuck. Or by now, you know I like to call it the Charles because I don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck. Hit the start button. The door closes. The clamp shuts. And then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame, which it is. You can see as it's going around tracing the shape of the right side of the frame first. And the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once. is measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. Now in just a moment, the lens will drop down onto the cutting wheel as it's starting to spin. The light you see flickering in the background is water. That's there to catch the optical sawdust from the lens as it comes off the cutting wheel. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry, where plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex lenses cut wet. Meaning that water sprays onto the lens for the entire cutting cycle. Now, water will spray onto the lens only for the last 20 seconds to wash away any optical debris that you may see beginning to form on the edge of the lenses now. But as I mentioned before, your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarbonate is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. These are high impact ballistics grade lenses, the same lens materials that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from, from shrapnel and from flying debris. It's the same lens material that OSHA requires to be made in their safety glasses for any factory workers on the factory floors. Speaking of protection, it has 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin from overexposure. Your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotion screens and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple of hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun there in Dallas. By the way, these are Essilor brand of lenses. Essilor, it's funny how they're coming, they're coming home, Robert. They're coming home right back to Dallas. So, your lenses, not only are they thinner, lighter weight, but they're aspheric. Aspheric simply means not spherical. A spherical lens is round in every direction, giving you an ugly cosmetic fishbowl appearance. 
So this has a flatter front curvature to give you a wider field of view to fit in today's flatter front frames. And I'm going to take care of you. Now you upgraded to the anti-glare coating which reduces glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain. But street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights, and such. Now it's also uh, goes by the initials ARC, which stands for anti-reflective coating. It reduces reflection, so when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses, so it makes for much better eye contact. Or if you take a selfie, if someone else takes a picture with a flash, you won't see that lit up in the lens. Now the third feature that I like, which is the practical side, is it comes with the industry's hardest scratch coating to protect because the machine that applies the anti-glare coating costs well over a million dollars. It takes over 24 hours to vaporize eight different coatings onto your lens. And it has to dry and then go through an acid bath through each coating. So because of the time and the expense, they put the hardest scratch coating on there to protect your time and investment. Now this is, I want to bring up a point here. When Nellie, the Robert's love of his life, contacted me, she says this is listed as a women's frame. True that, but I have sold more of these to men. In fact, the 1163B, which is all blinged out, I have sold not only more to men, but to the most thugged out gangsters you could ever really possibly imagine. And the 1175B, again, another women's frame with the most bling on there, I have never sold it to a woman, only to men. They sent me their... There's selfies with the gang tattoos on the neck, on the face, all that stuff. So, don't be bothered by this being listed as a women's frame. It is unisex. And, whoop, i got to cover that back up. I don't want y'all to see what's hiding underneath there. So, I'm going to take my thumb, wipe away any of the optical debris that's on the edge of the lens. I'm going to take my Phillips head screwdriver. That I know it because it's the red cap versus the black. I'm betting on red tonight. I'm going to loosen that screw, pop the lens in, tighten that screw down, do a little bit of righty tighty. Go ahead and take this block off and I can start working on the right lens. Dry that off, put this on my sticker collection. Actually, let me go ahead and start cutting the left lens. Flip that over to L, pop that in there, close the door just like before the clamp's going to shut onto the lens. It's going to be traced again by the two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the shape of the left side of the frame and measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. Look at that Robert, with all your crazy astigmatism you got no edge thickness. So, I'm going to come down here to the lensometer, turn the axis wheel back to 28 degrees away from 30 put it in over that black dot read the power and I am getting minus 50 exactly halfway between 0 and 1 heading this way going away from 0 that's because you are nearsighted with your glasses off you can see up close great but you only need two steps of far-sighted correction now once everything is the correct size we got to take away those fuzzy edges you got 10 steps of astigmatism correction that's where them crazy stigs come from Uncorrected the stigmatism makes sixes and eights look alike with the letters P and F. It's the fine two knob, and we're going to turn that fine two knob to 28, starting at zero, going to 90 and 180. We're going to turn that knob to 28. Now, driving uh, the reason why driving at night is tough for you, and you would love that anti glare coating, is that when light comes in, it does not come in through your pupil and focus in one single point on, on the back of your eye on your retina. It comes in and scatters all over, and that's why you get a terrible halo effect when driving at night. It causes you to squint, because when you squint, you're trying to filter how much light gets into your eyes. So now you can drive with your eyes wide open, but we're going to check your astigmatism correction, the second curve. And we are at three. Three in the red. How do we get to three? If someone borrowed 50 cents from you, then they borrowed another 250, they would owe you three dollars. $3 in the red, exactly halfway between two and four. So, your left eye minus one, minus one and a quarter at 168. Now you think that 28 and 168 are very far apart? Actually not. You're 28 degrees away from the 180 meridian. This way a straight line is zero to 180 with 90 and 270 in the middle. You're 28 degrees here. For your left eye, you're at 168, which is only 12 degrees. So really there's only 16 degrees separating that. 
Now, you could care less about that. I just find it interesting. These first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. This last number could be anywhere from 0 to 180. Now, this frame sells for $225. The anti-reflective coating, the anti-glare coating adds $44.99 for a total of $269.99. Now, I want to show you all something. What's hiding underneath here? Just because I'm working on Versace here, I want you all to check this out. This is the 2150Q. The Q stands for quality. It should be L for leather. It's got the level with the Medusa in the middle. It's got the Baroque patterns around the edges with the Medusa on the side. Now, guys out there who's looking for something real stylish, the classic aviator, this comes in a black. It actually even comes in a white. If you want something to pop in the summertime when you're all whited out, from your Air Force Ones to your Nike hat, get this in the white. I sell more of these, believe it or not, more of these with clear lenses than I do with with dark lenses. Now you can get these with transitions or the transitions extra active with the mirror coating. That gold mirror would look tough in here. But I want to show you all something new they just came out with. And you hear, you know that saying, there's a time and a place for everything. Oh snap, look at the time. This must be the time. And let me look around. This must be the mofo place. What did Versace do? They came out with color code number 1002 slash 11. Pull this frame out and check out what we got here. This frame in the red. For all you people out there who like to wear red. <coughs> excuse me. Come and get some. Come and get some. Now this has the gradient lens. But again, imagine this with a clear lens in there. Or with anti-glare like you got in your lens. Or again, the transitions that turn dark. You can either get a gray, brown, or green when you go outside. Or... Uh, if you really want to treat yourself, get the Transitions Extra Active Gray with the gold mirror. Of course, it even comes with a red mirror. You could do that in here, and that would be just, uh, that would be all that. So, again, that Extra Active Coating with the mirror that comes on the Extra Active Gray or Brown comes in silver, gold, green, blue, red, or pink. So, ladies out there, you want this frame with a pink mirror coating? The black frame with the pink mirror or the white? It don't matter. It's all unisex. Quality is all unisex. Let me let me tuck this away. It's going to go back to bed for the night. It ain't going nowhere. Ooh, let me close that back in there. Cover these up. Put these over here with it. With it. All right, let's go ahead and take this left lens out. Dry everything off. By the way, I can do these in non-prescription too. Don't think you have to get prescription in there. If you guys just want to rock something, come on. Come on and get some. Where'd your frame go? Oh, it's down here. All right, so again, Lefty Lucy with my Phillips head. So years from now, Robert, if you need new lenses, you just need a small Phillips head screwdriver, a little jeweler screwdriver. You're going to do a little bit of Lefty Lucy. Now, I'm not taking it out all the way. This is still attached. I just loosened it just enough so there's a gap in there. And I'm going to take your unbreakable lens. And I have the screw up. I don't want to hold it down because if it does fall out and bounce onto the floor, the best thing to do is get a baking pan or a dish, put a t-shirt or dish towel over the baking pan so if the screw falls out, it'll land in there softly. You don't want it to hit a hard surface and go bouncing. But again, I do not have it all the way out. I'm going to tuck the lens in. I got to do mo. I got to do mo. All right, so it did come out all the way this time. I'm holding it upside down so there's less chance of it popping out. We're going to use my fingers to make sure everything is in there smooth and no sides poking out. Take that dish towel, put it on the edge of something. I've got a little piece of rubber here that protects the finish of your frame. When I press down on it, do a little bit of righty tighty. That goes in there and we back shut. We back closed. Pull that block off, pull the sticker away, use my hand approved drying method. Throw that back. Oh, look, it tried to run away. It's still alive. Let me get catch it. Throw it back in the pond. Take my sticker, add it to my sticker collection. Come down here to the lensometer. Put it in over that black dot. Put it on what? 168. I can read it that time. Put it in over that black dot. Read the power, and I am getting minus one on the DOT on the dot. You have one and a quarter steps of astigmatism in your left eye. Let's go ahead and check for that. We ship all goes well. We're going to end up at minus two and a quarter. Look at that. One tick mark past two, heading towards three. So that is cut perfectly. Your pupillary distance is 64. When I place the PD stick, I'm going to turn the card around. 
when I place the PD stick against my thumb on the right lens then we look at it on the left lens we're getting 64 millimeters let me turn this around so y'all can see this better I'm gonna place the zero on your left lens and then when we hold it up to the right we're getting 64 millimeters so that is cut perfectly I'm gonna check the optical center height of 18 two millimeters above the center oh we're good we are good Robert you are good so this is the portion of every video that as I clean your lenses I mentioned that when you get these in the mail by the way this purchase is tax free and includes free shipping anywhere in the US and Dallas Texas is still in the US although it's still a little bit early you never know what can go on down there but when you get these in the mail there is a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight however there's an 80 percent chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other that's because 80 percent of people have one ear that is higher than the other and because of that statistic 99 percent of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them so just stop by your local place and just tell them if it's too loose or too tight or high on one side and I'm part of that 80%. I'll show you all that in just a moment. But if it's high on one side, it only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to adjust a pair of glasses perfectly. You're going to get that Texas orange cleaning cloth. I also include a selfie request to have your picture on the website. Robert, you know it would be nice if you had Nelly sitting on your lap and you rocking these things. Turn your head just enough so we can see that M, that medallion on there. But I also send out instructions not only how to care for your frame and lenses so they'll last you for years, but for the premium microfiber cleaning cloth that I'm providing. By the way, I field test every cloth so when you get this in the mail and you see the wrinkle, you know it works. But instructions on, on how to care for your Versace cleaning cloth and your case so it too will last you for years. No other seller on the internet does that, I am told. So, but I'm going to get these in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. As I mentioned, I'm part of that 80%. When I take mine off and press down, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. So, what am I wearing? I am wearing, I can't see. Let me get my magnifier. I can't see. This is the Versace 3245, color 5237. And the 53 eye size it also comes in a 55 it comes in the more popular black with the platinum shiny temples and look i got the i got the versace medallion on the side of mine the medusa medusa in the house this is actually a blue camo or a blue tortoise i'm a sucker for anything blue because i'm always wearing a blue shirt and this silver matches my wisdom highlights above my ears that's right i got some gray hairs up there I came by them, honestly. Went through some hardships, some ordeals in my life. And I got the battle scars to show up. But that's okay. I'm wiser today than I was 10 years ago. So, let me flip this over. Press down. There is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly. Check the tension on each spring hinge. That's the uniform. If one was tighter or looser, I would adjust that. When I say make sure they overlap perfectly, that neither temple is askew like that. So, that is that. Robert and hang on let me back up for a minute if y'all like what you've seen please subscribe to my youtube channel you can follow me on facebook and instagram is freeprescriptionlenses.com on twitter is free rx lenses if you want to email me you can email me directly at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com i know that's a lot to type so just go to the website and hit the contact me button and you won't have to do a thing after that or you can leave a question or comment in the comment section below i'll always get back to you plus other people will be able to read your question or comment and be able to benefit from that. So Robert in Dallas, Texas. Nelly, the love of your life, wanted to surprise you with these Versace 1163M. Again, the M stands for medallion. Anyone out there going to the website, there's 1163B, which stands for bling, which has a whole lot of bling on the side. But those of you who want something classic, come and get some. So again, think of me for the selfie request. I'd love to have your picture on the website. And uh, everyone else has got a chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.